All right, so I'm going to call to order the meeting of the Committee on Rules, Orders, Appointments, and Ordinances for October 13th, 2015. I'm uh, Councilor David Murphy, Councilor Ryan O'Donnell is here, Councilor Maureen Carney could not join us tonight, but we do have a quorum. Uh, so we're going to call the meeting to order. I'm going to announce audio and video recording of the minutes. Uh, Pam, our clerk, is going to take uh, minutes of the meeting. And uh, we've introduced the members. Uh, I'm going to ask for public comment, but as you can see on the camera, there really is no public here, so we're going to skip over public comment. Um, so the first thing we're going to do um, is take a motion to open public hearing uh, regarding zoning standards for significant trees. I move to open the hearing. All right, and I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Excellent. Uh, and uh, Carolyn Mish from the Office of Planning and Sustainability is here to uh, explain the proposed zoning standards for significant trees. Thank you. Um, I actually have a slight addition to what I uh, had sent to Pam last week for the ordinance amendment. It was a paragraph that I had inadvertently left out of the planning board's recommendation mm -hmm. when I was editing, so I just want to give you the updated version. I already emailed it to Pam, so she mm -hmm. has it and I can walk through it. Now, was this in their public hearing or do they have to redo this? Too? No, it was in the planning board public hearing. The, the, the items in red are what the planning board voted to add to the ordinance. After and their public recommend, hearing. Right. Okay, right. so this is this is the complete recommendation to Right, us. right. Um, so what's in front of you is, and um, Councilor Donald can probably speak at length to this because um, he um, was one of the co-sponsors and really worked through a lot of this language um, the idea behind the amendment to add a section in the zoning um, related to the removal of um, a certain size tree is to ensure that um, we keep a um, both better track and also an eye out for protecting significant trees in the city. So this ordinance creates a new section that we haven't had before um, that de both um, defines um, certain terms related to trees and also defines what a significant tree is and then creates um, a set of criteria for evaluation um, if a project is coming to um, for any kind of uh, relief from the planning board or zoning board that um, removal of significant trees of a certain caliber, certain size, um, need to be replaced either on site or um, replaced in kind through a payment in lieu of elsewhere determined by the city. So um, that's sort of the summary of the concept of the ordinance. And I'd be happy to go through each of those um, definitional terms at a, at, and the, the details of the ordinance as well. Oh, please do. Okay. So uh, the first section of this it talk, it, uh, provides five um, definitions um, to be added to the zoning. So caliper diameter is the diameter of a tree hunk. <laughs> It's supposed to be tree trunk. I just noticed that. Um, I think it sounds like something Elvis would say. Right. I don't know if that's on your copy or We, are, we have hunk, you're, too. You're, uh, that's why I wanted you to go through it, because I was interested in what a hunk of tree is. It's not on the original. It's on the planning. Yeah, yeah I don't know what happened there. Um, I apologize. So the diameter of a tree trunk of a new of a tree measured at 12 inches above grade. Um, Round. Uh, above the ground. Right, above, above the ground. Um, a critical root zone defined as the root, the root zone is a, a, also known as a central root zone is the portion of the diameter of trees root system that is minimum nece the minimum necessary to maintain the stability and vitality of the tree. And for the purposes of this section, the critical root zone shall be calculated by using the following formula. That the diameter at breast height in inches multiplied by 24. For example, 
for a tree with a trunk diameter of 10 inches, the critical root zone would have a diameter of 20 feet. And that would be the area for protection. And then we have a definition of diameter at breast height, um, which would be measured at four and a half feet above the ground. Um, and those are for mature trees, not new trees, um, as the caliper diameter is um, standard. And then we have drip line, which is a circular area around a tree encompassing the tips of the outermost branches from which rainwater tends to drip. And then significant trees started out the ordinance as any, decidu any deciduous tree of 24 inches diameter breast height or larger or any other tree specifically identified as a specimen tree on any tree inventory plan adopted by the planning board through, um, based on comments that came from the tree commission, um, they recommended that we not just look, that the city not just look at deciduous trees, but look at any tree. Um, and then they also commented that we should make sure that we're consistent throughout our ordinance and um, uh, noted that in the subdivision regulations, which is a completely under the jurisdiction of the planning board, we um, have trees identified for evaluation of 20 inch um, diameter breast height. So the, the red line here is to change it to 20, which is consistent with the subdivision regulations. Um, and incidentally, the only specimen tree inventory that I'm aware of that we have is at the state hospital. Um, but we, so we do have that one uh, on this bed outside plan. And then page two, uh, it is, um, would be inserted into section 12, which is, is our environmental standard section in the zoning. And um, the first paragraph um, outlines um, the intent um, of the ordinance. The city of Northampton finds that significant trees enhance air quality, reduce noise, reduce energy costs, create habitat, enhance aesthetics, and um, property values. There's another event, weird um, spell check thing. Um, or copy. Values and benefit city neighborhood. The intent of the section is to encourage the preservation and protection of significant trees during development and redevelopment of projects that require a site plan approval, special permit, comprehensive permit, finding, or variance, collectively referred to as zoning relief. Um, and this last paragraph that I just distributed is an add on that the planning board approved or recommended as well. It actually is comment from National Grid. Um, they submitted comments to me ahead of the planning board hearing because they were concerned that this might be construed to prevent them from doing their work on under their utility lines. And the planning board didn't feel like it was necessary language, but they also didn't feel that it was um, um, an onerous add-on that would detract from the intent of the ordinance. So they approved that change. Um, then section B, no person shall remove any significant tree um, associated with any site plan approval or any other zoning relief without a site plan approval from the planning board. Um, if, if the site plan approval is otherwise required or an administrative site plan approval from the Office of Planning and Sustainability, if no site plan is otherwise required. So um, that if there is a site plan um, um, if, if there's a site plan approval required, then that's when we look at the trees. And then there's the next section talks about the effective date of this ordinance, which is backdated because it's been taking a while to collect public comment through this process. So we have July 2015. Um, or within 18 months previous, prior to submitting that site plan. So the idea behind this section is to ensure that if someone has the intent of filing a site plan, um, that they don't cut down the trees ahead of the site plan and then submit the plan and say, there are no trees on my property, so we don't have to worry about that. Um, and there's a lot of debate about the timing of 18 months, but, um, and I don't know if Councilor Donald wants to talk about that, but there was a lot of debate going into this about what would be you know, a timeline that would be effective in ensuring that projects um, 
that applicants don't go ahead and cut trees before they're coming for review. Can I ask a question? Yeah. Um, what, what was the nature of the debate? I mean, I, 18 just seemed, seemed reasonable to me, but. Well, actually, I guess I should rephrase that. It wasn't necessarily a debate. There was a discussion, you know, okay. what time would be, sure. you know, is that enough? Is that too much? Sure, sure. sure. So, but. Um, the couple of 18. The 18 was fine. Um, so then the next section talks about when um, this, where these, this does not apply and trees located in the jurisdiction of the Conservation Commission, city-owned public sh shade trees pursuant to MGL Chapter 87, trees associated with emergency projects necessary for public safety, health, and welfare as determined by the Building Commissioner, the Director of Planning and Sustainability, or the Director of Public Works and trees that are hazardous due to disease, age, or shallow roots as determined and confirmed in writing by certified arborist and reviewed by the city's tree warden. And this addition was uh, based on comments from the tree commission, um, just that and reviewed by the city's tree warden. Um, the next section talks about um, any person removing a significant tree that is subject to the section shall satisfy either one of the following conditions. A, provide replacement trees um, in accordance with um, standards identified below. One, replacement trees shall be non-invasive, um, deciduous trees on or off site as approved as part of the site plan or administrative site plan so that each inch of diameter at breast height of the removed tree shall be no less than one half inch of the cal caliber diameter of replacement trees. Do you ever plant a 15 inch tree? It's really, really difficult and expensive. That's a big tree. Right, and that you notice that we're using different measurements. So the caliper system is used for the new tree. So it's not, um, the intent isn't to replace it with um, a big tree, but that many smaller trees that add up to that because of survivability and other issues related so to planting. So your trees. intent is not to have somebody try and plan a 10 or 15 inch tree. That's right. Okay. That's right. Um, and then alternatively, um, uh, so the the replacement tree shall have a minimum of two inch caliper. Mm. Um, so clearly the goal is A lot of two inch trees. What's that? Yeah. A lot of two right. inch trees. Yeah, right. Because the big trees are outrageous to try and yeah. plant and keep alive. Right. And then there's a section about um, the next subsection is replacements of, tr of trees shall be maintained in good health um, 24 months after they're planted. And there's another section in red line there that came out of the Tree Commission's comments that um, they would like to see the tree, see the tree work or confirm that that planting and health is maintained um, in that period. Um, and um, and there's another typo here, <laughs> as directed by the tree warden. Okay, this is going to have a, a spell check underline. I don't understand that. Um, so alternatively, if the trees can't be planted, there's an option to pay into a city fund for the um, planting of those trees within the vicinity so that the location of where the tree comes out is is um, enhanced with new trees to sort of make up for the loss of that canopy. So does that fund exist? Uh, no. Fund? No. So we're gonna have to, we're gonna create a revolving fund for that, or yeah, it and would be a spe it would be a specific line item fund, tree fund. Mm -hmm. And how would that be administered? And um, well, it's like any other account that we have in the city that we, so there there would be a line for a tree fund and then um, the um, they, anytime there are funds extract taken from that fund to plant, it would go through city council. Um, but it doesn't exist. So this is a right. It would be a new two created fund. Right. And the tree theoretically, the tree committee would be the one that would be. Um, they would, and the city tree warden 
would be the one to oversee the planting and the location of those those trees. Mm -hmm. And they could be in the public right of way or um, uh, well, they would be on public property if they were paid into the tree fund, because obviously they don't have control over property. And how do you figure what the person pays in? Um, so the um, so this determines that um, at the time they would have to show how much each tree costs plus the planting and maintenance for that 24 month period. So it would be whatever the cost is at that time. So it's similar to the way we review construction quantities for subdivisions and we have line mm -hmm. items for sidewalks and trees. So if you need 20 inches of a tree and you're going to use 10 2 inch trees and so we come out to whatever it costs to plant them and maintain them. Right. And who, may, who would maintain them or do you have to contract for somebody to do that? Well you'd estimate the cost of the 24 month period for maintenance and yes then we have to contract with someone to water it or if it's not the city then um, contract with someone to water it. Mm -hmm. but does that does that language exist anywhere or is that just something we make up when we get to it um well this language says um the fund would be um capitalized with money in the city's with in the city's estimate that will allow the city to plant new public shade trees on city property in accordance with um, the previously discussed criteria. So we at the time that that's the language that stipulates what it would be. But there's no set formula yet. Mm -hmm. We just will decide at the time what the person pays. Right, because it's going to be based on the market value of the tree at the time and what the contracting <laughs> value is at the time. Um, so then, um, uh, the next section is protection during construction. So, um, site plan says you need to protect it based on the um, drip line and or the critical root zone. Um, so, um, this next section talks about um, how you would do that and the fact that you have to have a certified arborist. Um, report that they have actually protected the tree in accordance with the approved plan that the planning board approved for that protection. Um, and then um, the final section is about record keeping that um, planning of office and sustainability will collect annual totals of the number and diameter at breast height measurements of significant trees preserved and replaced. So conceivably during construction, you could have a 30-foot drip line, no fly zone around a tree. Right. Unless you chose to take it down and replace it somewhere. Right. Oh. Well, as, as I understood it, or the intention was, you could also provide documentation of how you intend to work, to work with that. So I didn't intend it to be you know, a no fly zone in an absolute sense, but some kind of plan to show that as you do the work. Yeah, so if you're going to drive heavy equipment, you've got to put a bunch of mulch down or something so you're not upsetting the roots. Or I don't think we, we're not like we're building a fence around the tree or something. Well, it could be in certain circumstances. For instance, <clears throat> at the State Hospital now, there, there, are lot, there are a handful, two handfuls of specimen trees in the that will have to be protected in this next phase of construction on the north end. The planning board is in the process now of reviewing the protection plan and it will require some fencing around whatever that diameter is based on that species and that um, size of tree. Um, and in some cases there will be a no disturb zone. Um, in other cases there may be a section that's no disturb and then another section that might allow with the correct matting um, to have vehicles drive over, but there would still be an area that's no, that's a protected zone, that no vehicles, no storage, no lay down area or anything would be allowed. Um, and that's good, just gonna be based on the type of the tree and how big it is. Mm -hmm. So this ordinance on private property where no work is planned, 
if I want to go in my backyard and I don't need any permits whatsoever from the city and cut down a tree. Uh -huh. And I don't need I don't need anything. I just want to cut down this tree. Right. No okay. issue. No issue. No. Okay. But it so really it's intended to deal with the site plan where construction is taking place and you're dealing with these trees because you need permits to do work in the area and the trees then fall under that. Right. Okay. And then it captures it ahead of time so that you, you know if you're intending to do a project. You can't go whack the trees. Okay. Now does that period of time change with sale? So let's say one owner cuts down some trees and a year later they sell the bill they sell the property to somebody else who wants to develop it. Is that second owner in trouble because the first owner cut the trees down? Um, Being that it wasn't the property under their control at the time. Good question. Am I, uh, I just want to check the language again. My gut reaction would be to say yes, um, but let me just see if that's what the language said. Because um, that, you know, continuous, I mean, somebody cuts a tree down a year later, somebody buys a property and wants a permit, they really should be getting busted for something the previous owner did a year ago. Yeah. I mean, the way it's written, it doesn't matter who the owner is. It just says within 18 months immediately prior to such site plan or zoning relief. Really. So the, sec the second owner might be in trouble for something somebody did before they own the property. Well, um, I don't know if in trouble, they might need to do tree replacement, if you call that trouble. Well, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm thinking, I mean, I just happen to sell property. That's a disclosure for me to say, oh, by the way, you might want to do something with this property, but I have to tell you because the previous owner cut the trees down. If you go in for a permit, you could get a whack of replacing 20 trees because of something that happened before you even owned the property. Right. But I will say there are not a lot of 20 inch trees in the city. So it's not just any tree. So if someone clears their site, they might clear a whole bunch of trees and none of them rise to this level. Mm -hmm. So I don't think it's going to be as um, pervasive of an issue as that. No, it's still an issue. Yeah. It's still an issue. One more thing that can get you in trouble if you don't remember it. Um, can I follow up on a, a question that mm -hmm. the chair actually asked? Um, just to make sure, because if you're going and you're knocking down a tree and you don't need a site plan, the way it's written now, um, you know, it says it'll be subject to this section essentially if site plan approval is required or an administrative site plan approval from the Office of Planning if no site plan is otherwise um, required. So would, would, it, would an administrative um, site plan approval be required if Councilor Murphy just wanted to go in his backyard and whack a tree? Move a tree? Um, it sounds like we don't really intend that, but I wouldn't want that to be so written if it had yeah what side. threshold do you what, what threshold can you do an administrative site plan versus going to the plan well this is so there are only a few uh, however um we at the, in the office have been looking at ways to make the process simplified for people and t and move things from full-blown planning board site plan to a tech uh, like you're doing zoning essentially right you know. so there are really only a few that have gone through that allow administrative site plan one of them is um, um, a certain size photovoltaic array um, on a property or there's one that's actually during the next discussion that will be about um, um, detached accessory apartments that we're looking at, um, propose, well, we propose doing that by administrative site plan approval. But to answer the question, this is meant to be, because site plan is defined in the ordinance as by the planning board, adding the administrative site plan is meant to say it also applies to anything that would require or be triggered by an administrative site plan, which is at staff level as opposed to a planning okay. board level. No, shift, yeah, shifting things to administrative site plan, is that something the planning board can choose to do on its own? No, it would it's be an ordinance, ordinance change. change. It would be city council okay. change, yeah. Ordinance change. Yeah. 
All right, so trees sitting in someone's backyard where they're not seeking any sort of site plans or permits are still fair game for the average person to turn to the firewood if they want to. Right. But if it's a construction project, it needs a site plan. Construction project over 2,000 square feet, right? That triggers all. Right. I, I have a number of kind of observations about the new comments, but I mean. Oh, please. Okay. Do, do, you have, do you have any kind of other general concerns? Oh, no, no, go right ahead. Go ahead. I'll, okay. I'm still thinking. Okay. Um, well, thank you, first of all, for all the work <laughs> you've done and the thinking. Um, I want to make sure we, we catch all the little things here. Um, you fixed the, the tree hunk under caliper diam uh, right. diameter. Um, in section A, we're spelling out uh, property values as it's as it's spelled. Right. And then in this red line that was added um, at the request of utility companies, I I would rather it that sentence go under section D, which is a section that enumerates all the exclusions. Okay. So right now, I mean, that's a, that would just be my preference to make this ordinance, you know, prettier. So it is D, the requirements of this section shall not apply to trees located on the property of the Conservation Commission, city on public trades, uh, shade trees, trees that are hazardous, etc. I would I would propose adding f um, five um, trees removed during the course of work and then the rest of it performed by a utility company in maintenance of its right of way or in its maintenance, repair, or replacement of infrastructure that is unrelated to development of, to a development project requiring zoning relief, et cetera, et cetera. That would just seem more like a more logical place to put the exclusion that I don't think it would change the substance of it. I, I don't have a problem with it. So, okay. okay. Um, and, and B, there's a lot of funny, funny little things that have cropped up in, in the changes that I feel like it must be some kind of Microsoft Word yeah. issue or something. Yeah. But, um, in, in B, the second line of B, um, after the word, words planning board, it, there's a semicolon which really is, we should just strike that semicolon. Um, in, in C, in the first line, it says July Roman numeral one. <laughs> that should be one. Yeah. And I would also just flag, I don't know if, if the committee feels the need to change the effective date since we time is a moving. Right. Um, just a question. Um, I, I think all the instances of tree warden, the tree warden should be capitalized to conform to the rest of the ordinance. Um, in section E section one and then subsection one mm -hmm. and we have to fix all the all the bullets yeah that, you know, know what happened yeah. so we can just decide to do that um it says replacement trees shall be non-invasive and then it says c list and then it has a website i mean i don't i don't think website should be in our ordinance so, so that came out of a comment from okay. the um tree committee they wanted um a specific standard mm -hmm identified mm -hmm. and and there's already a list on the planning board's link so that right. was my recommendation to the planning board right. to address the tree commission's concern yeah. that there wasn't any kind of reference to a list this, so i it, you know i, I get certainly it. don't have any um you know you can simplify that and not do a web page and just say on the city's website or something that's fine too yeah, I just think in practice, I don't think in our ordinance should our ordinances should have references to our, our website. I think it should be more self-contained. Self -contained. Yeah, our, it, if we have a list on the website, for example, we could take it off and we could we could create a new definition in the first section and have have that be the list of um, um, non-invasive species. Okay. Or you know what I mean? Just and, and, yeah. and I don't think the list, you know, to go along with that, I don't I don't think the list should be floating around on a website, but at the same time, I don't think the ordinance should have to be changed if we want to change the list. You know, the right. list should be kept by the
the tree commission in its records or you know in the back of the phone book in your office or something so okay. that the right. ordinance doesn't have to change but it's you know so the website yeah. goes away yeah okay you know or it has a different yeah or it's a different address right and uh so therefore can we simply say as defined by the office of planning system? or the or yeah. the planning board, the planning board. Yeah. yeah but they'll keep an inventory of what they like and what they're the street committee or whoever is actually doing this right are you, are you also i know there's a lot pam i know there's a lot of minor changes are you oh i'm sure carolyn will send me a revised version yeah. in the morning it'll be She's i'm making it and i have it too right. so I'll, I'll see capitalized fixed property, no semicolon, July 1st. Capitalized tree warden, That's fix fine. the bullets, just, eliminate the sure. reference of the website, <laughs> fix directed, tree trunk. Will my name be run right on the ballot too? <laughs> <laughs> so what is the, what did we decide on changing this to, if not the website? What, uh, what's the, defined what, by planning board? As defined by the planning board? Okay. Um, all right, um, try to make this as, as quick as possible. And um, subsection three, there's that um, directed spelling error. Mm -hmm. um, and now in, in section two, this is pay funds to the city for a tree replacement fund account that in the city's estimate will allow the city to, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering if it makes sense. When we say in the city's estimate, I wonder if we wanted to find that any further. Who's estimate specifically? Um, your your office, or uh, is it a planning board function, or, um, or is that is well? It typically, what happens is, and so then maybe we can define it further. It could be in the city's um, in the planning board planning board's estimates based on input from. I mean, I don't know if we want to go that far, but basically what, what happens in the subdivision regulations is the planning board approves the number, but they always defer to DPW for the specs on the road construction costs and things like that. So it's maybe some other staff that's providing the technical data to the board, but the board is ultimately making the decision. So if you oh. want to leave it at that, I mean, the board would always look for whoever would have the most up-to-date and reasonable you know cost estimates for those things i think i, I just mean if, yeah i mean, I, I get that um i'm just wondering if the word cities should be like tree wardens or something specific or if it's well this specific. is going so this is going to be through this site plan approval process so i would suggest planning board um through the planning board's estimate and if you wanted to add additional language saying and no. that's based on blah 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 you know no, I don't, input yeah. from city departments or something no i think you know if city were changed to planning board and that makes sense okay. and that just would be more specific and better okay. so that's all. Um, and uh just a couple other minor things you know the, the other red line in section f subsection one the new red line says and should follow ANSI A300 standards. I have no idea what that is. I trust you, but okay, I'll spell that out. Um, it's in the tree world. It's a tree world thing. Yeah, they're government specs. So I'll, I'll just assume that. I'll just assume that's good. I, I <laughs> don't know why it was added, but oh well, that was another comment from the tree commission. Okay. All right. And finally, there's just a, you know, um, in subsection three of, of section F, the word accordance is, has become. Oh, yeah. You know what? I, I figured out what it was. Okay. It went from word to PDF back to word. Okay. And the reinterpretation from PDF okay. to word, I think, is what happened. So, those are my specific comments. Okay. A couple other questions I have in D4 mm -hmm. and reviewed by the city's tree word. At the moment, that's who? Rich Barcelletti? Mm -hmm. yeah. He the tree guru mm -hmm. yeah. at the moment. And I'm assuming that we're, we're dealing in construction zones, so we're not dealing with making the determination if a tree's hazardous, because if it's hazardous. No, we would require the, the applicant's arborist to submit a report. That, that it's hazardous. hazardous. Right. 
And then we might have the tree warden evaluate that report as a sort of, yeah. you know. But a truly hazardous tree is going to wait for that to happen? Uh, well, um, if someone has a project in mind mm -hmm. and they see if there's a tree that's a problem, um, you know, my my guess would be that they would come and they'd say, you know, I'm not ready to do my site plan, this tree is hazard, but here's my certified Because this, of course, falls into that 18-month thing, right. and I got a hazardous tree, and I may decide to do something with this somewhere down the road. Right. So I can't cut down this tree, or I'm... Yeah, I mean, the way I would look at it is I would, I mean, the way I would, I would say to the applicant, why don't you get an arborist to look at it to really make a determination about its hazard and its you know lifespan or if it's at the end of its lifespan and then that could be submitted to the planning board and say okay well, I, we had to do this and there is an exemption for um for um trees that are hazardous due to disease in subsection d above so that would, those would not apply. So if you have a report from an arborist to say this is a true a hazard, then you could take that down without a concern. Or if there's a general, the, the subsection for that is a general public safety right. issue. So right. it could be disease of the tree, or it could be like this tree is about to you know, hurt someone. Right. Violent tree. tree. Dangerously violent tree. Um, I still have concerns about the continuity of ownership and the fact that the activities of one owner could cause problems for a subsequent owner if the actions of the two are really unrelated. Um, yeah, I would see how that could be a little bit of a complication. I could also play devil's advocate and see that and, you can well, do a swap on the side to say the oh. evil intent that you place on people here you know i'm just saying well i'm saying the other way i mean you think somebody could be devious and i'm saying some schmo could buy something and try to develop it and be told oh, i'm sorry somebody cut the trees down 15 months ago before you even owned it and and that that is then they painting could just your wait, project they could make, wait three months Yeah, they could wait three months, but we could try and work some language out that would make it a problem in the first place. <laughs> right. I think that either way that you would create, I think there's potential for a problem on one side and there's a potential for loopholes that could be used on the other side. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, if you want to pitch a change, that's fine. I, I think it's fine the way it is. Yeah, I, well, I, I yeah, you brought it here, so I'm assuming you do, you know. But um, I really do have a problem with the continuity of ownership. And to, you know, I could say, come up with a standard, uh, provided it was in the applicant's ownership for the past 12 months or, you know, something workable. But I just don't want to leave it open-ended like this because, you know, 18 months is a very long time. and from my experience, I mean, I transfer things all the time, and somebody buying a piece of property really shouldn't be handicapped by the activities of a predecessor, a preceding owner, to the point where it messes up their permitting process. Because, uh, and I, that I really would like. I mean, I'm. It's it's going to be relatively sophisticated language, so I just don't want to sit here and make something up and say okay. I want to stick it in there. But I'd like to see the time taken mm -hmm. to craft something that doesn't handicap the current owner by something that was done by the preceding owner. Because not everybody has the evil intent you're worried about. Some people just do things and then subsequently I'm sell something. Yeah, no, I'm I'm you. Um, I will, I'd be happy to work on that. And I don't know if that means you want to continue it to the next ordinance committee or if you want to have me work on it before it goes to council. We talked about this not being able to go to council this week anyway. Mm -hmm. So we'll go November 5th. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you want me to work on it between now and November 5th. I, I, I would like okay. to see to see the language. Okay. And and have something that that certainly, you know, 
I don't want to make it possible for people to whack all the trees and then sell it to, you know, from one partner to do it and sell it to the next one and immediately file. But some language that, uh, you know, that the applicant uh, is not burdened by things done by a previous owner, you know, within a year, within some reasonable time frame. Right. So that if somebody buys something, because theoretically, if somebody's going to buy something and they're not going to do the do the permit application until they actually own it because that stuff's relatively expensive. Yeah. Even though we say, oh, you're going to go do this, the cost of it can sometimes be a problem. So yeah. until they own it, I don't think they're going to, you know, I, I don't see the conspiracy as being as likely as perhaps you do, but uh, to come up with something there, and since yeah. it, it's not going to make this month anyway. Yeah. Um, okay. Now, In, in everyone's opinion, because I, I don't really, s if, is this a significant enough change in everybody's opinion that we should continue the public hearing to see oh, if the this, public- I wouldn't say so. No, I, I'm not thinking so either, because we're discussing it here and obviously the room is full of people just dying to deal with this. But um, I'd be happy- You're talking about making <clears throat> a change to make it a potentially less, less restrictive restrictive so I, I think yeah I think we're good with that yeah so I don't mind closing the public hearing and then just dealing at the ordinance committee level with the language that we've talked about okay so you want to go back to ordinance not to November no. 5th council yeah I'd like to see okay. it come back here okay and then because we'll sure. we'd still be able to do first reading on it in November so yeah I mean there's no hurry yeah all right um, okay. Anything well, else for the public? Yeah, I mean, another issue you raised about the formula for determining the cost. I mean, do you, do you feel any need to specify, add specific I'm, to that? No, I'm, I'm comfortable with that as long as you can reach a combined caliper amount with a bunch of smaller trees. Right. Because I, ha I have dealt with big trees, yeah. and it is really a pain in the neck yeah. to plant a 10 inch tree. I mean, that. Yeah, well, that's why the, the idea is to, you plant smaller ones, and those are more available as nursery stock. So well, that's going to be a pretty easy number to get. And you, I mean, you can get the big trees too, but they cost a bloody fortune, and right. and they're really they're harder to get. They're harder to plant, and the equipment you have to use to plant them could infringe on the drip zone of another tree. Right. So it just <laughs> complicates things tremendously if you can't plant two inch right. trees. You know. That's, that's true. I, you know, what I was raising, what I thought I heard you say earlier was had to do with the tree replacement fund. Mm -hmm. You're just going to pay into something. Yeah. I'm just yeah. wondering if you have any desire to add specificity about that. Um, I mean, it's, it doesn't even exist yet. And we're going to have to create it because we've got to create the revolving funds. Right. So we're going we're gonna to end up, once this gets approved, we're going to be creating another revolving fund for trees. And I mean, I definitely will be in on that because I want to make it a little more specific than the mysterious parking fund. Right, and I, but I don't think that's a zoning issue. I think that's more of a administrative funding issue. So I would say that doesn't belong in the zoning text. No, no but we, sure. when we create it, we should be more specific than yeah. you know exactly how it gets administered right. and how it gets funded. Right. And, you Sounds know, good. What kind of focus focus happens with the money once it goes in there? Sounds good to me. Yeah. I think you'll see that in five minutes, right? And, and ordinance too, probably, so yeah. that'll come around. Um, so. so your ordinance meeting is November 14th? 10th? Oh. Second one, second month. Ordinance is the second Okay, second Monday. Monday. I think there's Monday. no holidays kicking around there, I don't think. There's Veterans Day sometime around there. So, anyway, we'll figure it out. Yeah. yeah. That's true, Veterans Day is around there. <clears throat> No holidays. When's no. Arbor Day? That's in the April. April. That's April. It's in April. Yeah, no. Even I know what Arbor Day. Huh? Okay. All right. So, um, as there's really no public here, I can't ask if, if there's any more questions. So, are you comfortable with the closing the public hearing? Yeah, I moved to close the public I'll second that. Hearing. All in favor? Aye. Okay. And. Uh, so a motion to continue this to our next meeting to look at that new language and I, I move we continue. And I'll second that all the time. Aye. Ah. On to our next public hearings.
Um, so this, these are changes to the. We got to open a public hearing. Oh. <laughs> so I, a motion to open a public hearing regarding zoning standards for RR and SR. I so moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. You're on. Um, these are changes to the re um, residential, rural residential zone and the suburban residential zone. And, um, you know, we've been moving to change the, all the tables so there's a, a consistent look and feel for the district. So that essentially is the big picture change to this. So it's going to have a little bit of design um, 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 added or element added, not to the extent that the A, B, and C districts were um, had those characteristics, but um, it, um, generally just graphically lays out what the setbacks are, the difference between flag lots and, and um, standard lots. And then there are a few changes to the text. Basically, we just went through and just transferred all the allowed uses from this older style table to these new um, sections. And um, the pictures and arrows and everything. Too. Yeah. Very cool. um, again, to sort of ensure that someone who's just grabbing a, a look at the district gets about 90% of what they need in one place for that district. Um, so um, the changes that um, were made, were, we, we simplified the um, lot size requirements. Um, and um, there was one um, addition, I think, since it was submitted under the lot dimension standards that um, we added the word under lot size, 40 square feet minimum, 80,000 square feet of private water and private sewer um, should be added to that. That was a request by Council of Barnes to But that came, that just, that was somewhere else, yeah, right? So now just, it's here too, yeah. so that it doesn't surprise you right. later. Yeah. Um, so the other piece is, um, are the changes in uses. So we've, um, this is one of the items that we're recommending to go to administrative site plan. The first one would be um, right now, in both RR and SR, the, um, a detached accessory apartment requires uh, a Zoning Board of Appeals permit, special permit. We're recommending that it go to administrative site plan review. Still the same standards with the size of the apartment, the orientation of the um, doors, and um, the requirements that an owner be um, present on the site. But um, this is, we didn't do this in any of the districts, so this is the first time we're recommending it. And um, the concept is really to say, well, for the most part, the zoning board has been approving these things. And this is in the outlying area where you really only have single family homes. And typically, these are larger lots, so sometimes you can't even see these accessory apartments that are going up. Sometimes you can, but in many cases, you can't. So this would take it from the Zoning Board of Appeals and make an administrative site plan review by staff? Right. And that's appealable. We would still do, there's, it's still appealable to the ZBA. If someone feels like this is not an appropriate decision, they can take that within 30 days and appeal and, to the Zoning Board. And go through the whole thing. Right. Okay. So that's one change. The other change is um, we've taken out the allowance by special permit for assisted living residences and nursing homes in both the RR and the SR. And um, the idea is that um, we feel like those should be closer in town and more of a commercial type of use, not a residential or rural residential type of use. Well, and certainly if they're not serviced by public water and sewer, it's Really right. nasty. Right. right. So, that, so that was my special permit before, and now it won't be there at all. Not allowed at all. Okay. Um, and then we've also eliminated um, the residential incentive overlay, which is just a section currently along the north side of Bridge Road. It was a swath of area that was an incentive on top of the urban residential A, SR, and RR, so, such that if you had a big enough parcel, four acres or more, and you were doing a cluster, and you did affordable housing unit, you could increase your density on that section. We've only ever had one project in the 20 or 30 years that it's been 
out there come in under residential incentive overlay. It's confusing, it's not used much, and in fact, it's an area where we don't want to necessarily increase residential densities because they tend that? to be on the, yeah. So, um, so the proposal would be to eliminate RI altogether um, mm -hmm. as an overlay. Mm -hmm. Just a question unrelated, but since we have, since I have you here, mm -hmm. is there any uh, interest? Because we've done, we've changed so much in the primary residential zones A, B, and C. Have you looked at some map changes because uh, we're talking about that area, the other side of Ridge Road, where one side's B and the other side's S, R. Mm -hmm. It really doesn't make a lot of sense because all the utilities are right there. Have you, have you, has it gotten to the point where you've thought about? Okay, now that we've tweaked all these zones, do we want to do some map changes and and infill some of the more residential zones? On the where closer it would be in yeah. section of Bridge Road, yeah. yes. In fact, the planning board has done an evaluation of URA and FR, and that I mean that's going to be a very controversial change. Mm -hmm. So it's it's floating out there on the work program, mm -hmm. <laughs> but we haven't been we haven't tackled it yet because there have been other things that have come in to. Mm -hmm. um, because there are there are places you know that are S R and R right. where the character and the utilities would permit it right. to be and done. so that is on the table um, and we it, it, that you will see that uh, okay. hopefully in the coming six months or so. Okay, no, that would be great because it goes it's consistent with all the changes we just recently made. Right. That we then go and look and say, okay, is everything really in the right zone? Right. And in SR, SR, I mean, there's places in SR where there's plenty of utilities. Right. You could build it out. It's not like out in Sylvester Road or right. somewhere, but closer in where it would be easy to add units and it's really not going to hurt much of anything because every the infrastructure is there. Right. Yeah. Okay. Um, the next change is we're uh, proposing to eliminate um, community centers. Um, from RR and SR, it's special permit now um, for in, in both those districts. Actually, let me just check SR, see if we moved it to Okay, so we left it in SR, so that, I'm, I'm sorry, I misspoke. Community center we take out of RR because we felt like it really doesn't belong way out in the hinterlands that community center should be closer in. Mm -hmm. um, and if you really want to do it, you just call it a church right. or a school. <laughs> um, and then junk cars taking off the list for allowance in RR and SR. Uh, we don't think that's appropriate <laughs> to have in a residential district. Now, how many? What does it take to trip junk cars? Um, I'm assuming if you. This is junk if you're, if you're, It's not a personal no, ownership. It's, it's yeah, you're it's, selling. It's a commercial entity. Mm -hmm. So junk cars, motor vehicle accessories, scrap metal, and it's defined. So it's currently allowed by special permit in these districts. Don't know why, but it Go doesn't away. seem like it's appropriate. Was there any request for those? No. And you're certainly not in your tenure. No. Uh, it's just one of those leftover things I think from. Can go. It's going away. Yeah. Um, so nursing homes, we talked about that. Um, and then there was one other thing that actually pushed us to do this sooner than later, which is changing the setbacks for, for ground-mounted photovoltaic arrays in these districts. Currently, they're 50 feet for a detached structure, even though a detached garage can be 10 feet. So because we're probably getting to the end of these um, tax credit cycles, uh, people are concerned they want to hurry up and put the ground mounted systems in. So we're reducing the setbacks in both districts Just to the same it. as for a detached garage or other accessory structure. Mm -hmm. And that's in this proposal too. Detached. But you could attach it now to a garage that was 10 feet away. Right, if you put it on the roof. But if you But if it's just a separate standalone ground mounted yeah. system, it would require fifty feet. But you could build a garage and then put it on. Yeah. 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 Which is the workaround now. As long as it's kind of silly. Way. <laughs> tree right. But you're not going to put near a tree anyway. That's right. You might cut the trees. So you cut down the tree, build a garage, and plant 50 trees. <laughs> For me. Um, it keeps the planters working. So. Uh -huh. 
Um, it, is that an administrative site plan? Um, the PD it, it is. Yeah. That's one of the few that is. That's on Ridge Road. Yeah. 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 That's also proposed. I'm sorry, site plan. Let me just go back to that section. So we didn't do SR, right? We've just been doing RR. I've been saying about these changes that I've been talking about are applicable. Are applicable both. both. Yeah. Are there any unique to SR that? Only the community center, leaving it in SR, but taking, taking it out, it of, out RR. of RR. Right. Okay. Um. Yeah, so the PV ground mounted array would move to administrative site plan from special permit under the planning board. In this purpose. So we're making the fix here. Yeah. Ten feet and administrative and it, well, it was already an administrative review, right? It was special permit. Uh, so it goes from special permit and fifty feet permit. to administrative. Like that's good. Because we change it in A, B, and C already. Right. Yeah, that's good. I'm following this. Is it question time? Oh yeah, please. Okay. Yeah. Um let's see. Under under um, site plan approval required for the following, and then there's bullets. Yeah. The second bullet is detached accessory dwelling unit for single family home, meeting same setback requirements as a single family home. Right. And then on the next page, the second to last bullet is detached accessory dwelling unit. It seems like they both refer to the same section. Are those duplicates? Yeah, it's a duplicate. All right. I just, I actually, while you were reading this, I just realized that. Oh, okay. I, forgot. I think because I was organizing it and I okay. forgot I cut and paste, but I didn't cut. <laughs> okay. I just cut and paste. Okay. So you're getting rid of what, the second one? Yeah. Okay. On, on both. Okay. Um, and it's a very minor thing, it's a scrivener's thing. Um, special permit required for the following uses. And those bullets, there's a bullet that begins. New, telecommun new telecommunications facility in accordance with section 350, you just have two section, oh, sure. whatever, hurricanes, okay. symbols. Sure. Okay. Um, that's right here. Which one do you get, R or S? It's probably the same. Probably the same, but I got R or S. You only want one of those? Did just, you want just, the one, just the one section. You want anything? <laughs> right. Yeah. I'm sorry we're so picky today. Got may as well get it done here. <laughs> All set. All set. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I think well they're pretty much identical, right? Except for the community center. So the mistakes are in both. Yes. Oh. Well, yes, yes, mistakes are in both. Okay. So do you have any more questions on either of these? I mean, have you heard, I mean, you've heard from people who want ground-mounted solar. Have you heard from people who really want accessory apartments? No. So it's not a big push for accessory Well, because those things open in an R and S are a lot of times septic issues and all kinds of, those are more complicated when you don't have city planning. Those are more complicated. All right. So again, just noting for the folks watching, riveted at home to this meeting that uh, there is no public here. So uh, asking for more public feedback is not going to do anything. So motion with those public hearing. Motion close. Second. Yeah. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and well, these actually, we might as well make a recommendation on sure. these since we're not asking you to, it's all Scrivener stuff. Yeah. We're not changing it. So you want to move a recommendation on these? Yeah, I'd, I'd move a positive recommendation on both. And I'll second that. Okay. Any more discussion? All in favor? Aye. Excellent. So 50% is out of here. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Now, if we take our agenda, we need to approve minutes of our previous meeting, and I think they're around here somewhere. Um, move approval. Second. Any discussion or corrections? None. All in favor? Aye. 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 Me too. Okay. And then uh, we zip over to, we already did the, after the public hearing did our motion. So we're up to bike lanes on North Elm Street, which are lovely and they're already there, but we yes, probably, should, already there. We probably <laughs> should get the ordinance to catch up with. Uh, and since I imagine you've seen these before, 
yep. because they came from P&P. Do you yep. want to, yep. they, for the folks at home, just to... They, they came from the Department of Public Works and we reviewed in the Transportation Department Commission, determined they matched reality and so... Do they are what they yes. printed on the road? Right. So, so there we go. Move a positive recommendation? I, I move that. And I'll second that. Any? We're good? Yeah. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And then uh, the ordinance pertaining to South Street, and this was a space or something? Are we? Yeah. Um, actually, I don't have the picture with me, but basically. Um, I'll imagine it. Yeah. <laughs> There's just one space that's sort of the bane of the neighborhood um, in terms of visibility coming out on the South Street. It's kind of a loan space when, when South Street was restriped at some point in recent years. Mm -hmm. um, so, and, and in fact, it's actually right in front of a bus stop for what that's worth. It's kind of, kind of strange, but um, it re won't really be missed. There's plenty of other parking on, on the street. Mm -hmm. And um, so, yeah. Just so this is no stop. parking in a certain location near a bus stop on South Street? Yeah, the bus stop, for whatever reason, is right where the space is. Um, it is um, Gosh, I'm forgetting the cross street. I wish I, I mean, when, in transportation parking, we had a map and this kind of thing, but, um, oh, well, look, you can see right here, next to Columbus Avenue. Oh, okay. Right where Columbus Avenue is. Oh, yeah. Is yeah, yeah, okay. So the chairman and the car are in by the bus stop and turn, trying to see when you turn. And that's what, and it comes from Council Shara, who this is her ward, and that's what she reports. All right. Um, so, yeah, just eliminates one space. So you want to make a recommendation? Uh, move a positive recommendation. All right, I will second that. I'd like to move an amendment, though. Oh, yeah? Maybe I should do that first, but I'll do it now. Oh. So I move that we As change 50 to 65 because the DPW measured that. And then we passed it up transportation and parking knowing DPW would provide a more accurate measurement. Okay, so you're moving it as amended, sure. 65 feet southerly based on recent DPW information DPW from DPW. DPW. Yeah. So. Okay. Then I will second it as amended. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Okay, so that's South Street. I said 65, didn't I? 65. 65. 65, yeah. Um, we don't have any appointments, right? No. And I don't have any new business. you have any new business? No. No? Pam, do you have any new business? No. Have we satisfied everything that's in our file to do? And we have your permission to adjourn? Yep. <laughs> I move to adjourn. And I'll second that. Okay. Aye. Aye. Thank you. Yeah.